Hey guys, what's going on? Sneaking up on you there from the side. It's been a long time. I think the last time we left off, I was actually in Tokyo and I was in that little personal gym. And I was telling you guys about this crazy lady. Um, so let me pick up from there real quick because I just want to update you guys. It has been a long time since I last did one of these. I try to maybe once a month, but really, man, it's been at least two, probably two and a half months because... Honestly, I just don't like making uh, the videos if I don't feel well. And the last like two months, I was, you know, it's just to make the video, I think you just, you have to be in a good spot. And when I was in Tokyo those last few weeks, I was just like, oh my God, I was so stressed out. And, you know, I just wasn't up for it. But anyways, uh, I went back the next week to see our friendly, lovely lady. And what she ended up telling me was that this is a bigger problem than than you thought and you're gonna have to she essentially told me we can't help you you're gonna have to leave i was shocked i was like i are you serious like oh you're gonna you're gonna want me to leave the country over this um so i tried to uh how, how should you say i don't know I, I wouldn't say you know to get a second opinion um and i went to the immigration office and i explained to them what happened you know um, and they're so strict, man. I swear, if there's one thing, you know, each time you go somewhere for, for longer than a visit, I was there living, I would say it was a few months. You learn something new each time, each trip, at least if it's a place you have not been to before. The main thing that I learned about Japan on this trip, which I think we kind of already knew, but I, I learned it firsthand. I got real experience. It wasn't just something I heard about was that they stick to the rules so much. It's unbelievable. That, for some reason, seems to be like the top priority of how a lot of people operate there. It doesn't matter if something does not make sense, is not the right thing to do, is not logical. None of that actually why matters. Siri? I don't know why Siri, Siri shut up. We're trying to make a video. Um, and that's the thing that I came to find out the first hand while I was there on this trip. So I will keep that in mind. <laughs> on future visits when I'm, uh, you know, in Japan. And that is, to me, it's just like a more cultural understanding. Now I know, whether I agree with it or not, now I know how seriously and to what extent that they follow the rules, whether that's, you know, good or bad, that's not for me to decide. But anyways, uh, immigration, super not helpful. They're just like looking at everything from the book. I'm like, guys, there, there's a virus, literally, this is changing everything. I'm sorry if it's an inconvenience to you, but you know, a lot of plans have changed, not just for me, for everyone. They weren't having it. And I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to fight this. This is, it was part, it was partially like, if you guys don't want me here, I don't have to be here. It's not like you're doing me a huge favor by letting me stay here. I didn't want to get resentful about it either. So that's why I don't want to argue. I wanted to leave on as positive a note as possible. But honestly, any other time, any other year, I mean, if we're, if you're working online like we are, you could be anywhere you want. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I, I don't need to be here. I'm just here because I want to be. I'm just choosing to be here. So I was uh, that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, how uh, unsympathetic and mean and not understanding they were about it. But I was like, oh, it's immigration. I don't think immigration offices... Uh, in any country are that good it's just the question of how bad are they and uh yeah in my opinion the one there is particularly bad but let's move on so i didn't get any help from the immigration office the lady at the school was like you need to go i was like all right well i guess i need to go i guess you know the funny thing though is i struggled so hard to get to japan that by the time i actually got there that all happened and believe it or not it didn't even matter because the class was canceled. So after after all that headache, I'm like, oh my God, they, they canceled the class. It doesn't even matter if I slipped in here by luck, you know, from Taiwan at the last minute, right before they shut the border or not, because the class didn't even happen. Um, so I would have probably, I would have had to leave either way, uh, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, I just, I booked my flight. I left on pretty short notice. I didn't really get a good chance to, to hang out. So that was... Yeah, if, if I'm being honest, that was the worst Tokyo trip I've ever had. Uh, and that's not, you know, to say anything bad about Tokyo. I'm just saying it's the worst Tokyo trip I've ever had. And that should not be a surprise because it happened during the pandemic. Um, so, yeah, every, a lot of things are going to be closed at half capacity, not working. 
and there was like no meetup so obviously it, it was literally the worst time to move to try to move to tokyo as like an international person that i can think of in recent history that that was the worst year in a long time probably since you know the the last huge um big you know natural tragedy whatever and then uh Okay, so I got back here to the US and I've been here hanging out ever since. Um, I guess I will just stay here. It's not like I have much of a choice. Actually, I could have gone to Europe. I could have gone to Europe. That was a huge, that was a huge decision. I was really like, I was falling either way. And uh, I mean, I looked at some flights going directly into the Schengen area and even like Romania and Serbia and some other places, which are, I don't think are exactly Schengen, but they're still EU. Um, and I was like, you know what? Wow, wouldn't that be something if I could do a last minute, unexpected, impromptu surprise Euro trip this summer? I'm like, that would be the ultimate, you know, get back at this virus if I could just go and still do my trip. Uh, okay, I don't want to sound irresponsible. Like, I'm just traveling, whatever, even though there's a virus. Like, you have to remember, I had to leave Japan. So it's not like I was traveling because I wanted to. It was more like I have to go somewhere where it's going to be the best place. Um, so I really heavily considered that. I think the main reason. Oh, yeah. So and the only reason I could go to Europe is because uh, I was a resident of Japan. I had the uh, the residence card. So, you know, as normal American, you would not be able to go, of course, because yeah, here is, I mean, the worst uh, as far as the virus. And then uh yeah, the main reason I decided not to was because it was like a 90 day thing. And I thought this could last more than 90 days. And then I'd have to arrange another trip. And I was like, Dude, man, should I, shouldn't I just go straight home? Because if I have to go to Europe and I'm only going to be there for, you know, 80, 85 days. And then I have to bounce to the U.S. again anyway. Why don't I just go straight there? Plus, I looked at, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but the, in Europe they had this... Uh, this this directive i don't know i don't even know what to call it honestly uh, calling it a recommendation almost sounds mean but that's essentially what it was and they instructed you know the eu said hey we're going to open up to these 15 countries that have had their you know virus levels very low um however when you actually checked each country's you know policy uh visitor or immigration policy like none of them were following it it's like the eu says something and no one listens. I, I, I was shocked at how many countries were not actually following this uh, this thing. Because probably if you saw it in the news, you would think it's like, a, I don't know, a law or, or an ordinance, a rule, something firm. But in, in, in reality, in practically speaking, it was just like a soft recommendation because no one was really listening. And uh, I checked many different countries, including I wanted to go some I hadn't been to, like Poland, uh, I thought was a good one. I thought about Greece, which I'm, that's like a country I'm quite interested in because I just have no idea what the culture is like. Uh, so when I get there, it would it would kind of be like a, you know, a toss up, a, a coin toss. I'm not sure what to expect at all there. Um, Poland, I like, you know, it's, an, it's a nice, cute, um, friendly place. And uh, anyways, just some places like that, you know, I spent a lot more time on the west side. So I was like, hmm, maybe central. Yeah, Germany was closed. Uh, Austria definitely closed. And anyways, that kind of bothered me. I wouldn't say it bothered me. It's kind of annoying, though, that the EU can put some stuff out there like that and no one listens to it. So um, that didn't happen. And I just came straight back here and I've been hanging out ever since. I haven't lived here in forever. It's kind of strange coming back after such a long time but i mean yeah this is what it takes it takes a virus to get me back some of my friends and family were saying like is that what it takes to get you back in the u.s like a global pandemic you're finally back home saul not because you want to see us but only because you had no choice and you had to come back here because your passport is from the u.s and i was like yeah you caught me but um i have enjoyed it uh mostly I say mostly because, well, on the positive side, most things here are quite nice. Um, but then, of course, there are there are some drawbacks. I don't want to talk about them just because I don't, you know, like spending time on negative stuff. But overall, it's it's been very pleasant. And uh, it almost feels like I'm visiting here. I don't want to say like I'm a foreigner um, but or an international person. But I'm de I definitely don't feel like a local here, which is the strange thing. Because after like 10 years, I haven't lived here since I was in university, like third year student. You know, I went off to uh, 
Well, I was in Austin, and then from there I did transfer to to Beijing, uh, to and some other stuff. But I was just you know gone for at least ten years. I haven't lived here, basically my entire adult life, which is a little bit crazy if if I think about it. But uh, yeah, I haven't. I was a student when I last lived here. I was in, you know in Austin, so it's just completely different, completely changed, and uh, everything I've done since being you know an adult, a full official adult. Has definitely been abroad, so it's a little bit weird being back here. Weird in a good way, and uh, I have enjoyed it. Sometimes I see stuff, and I, like I said, I don't feel like a local here anymore. I see stuff, and I think, man, that's so American. So I think like the same way other people do when they come to the U.S. and they see stuff, and they're like, oh, that's so particular, like American football, or you know, measuring stuff here in inches and the pounds, and. Um, Everything here's so big. Uh, every every everything. Uh, I don't want to be mean, but yeah, man. I'm man. People, uh, including the people, including it's just it's crazy. And, and the cars, like the amount of uh, like trucks and SUVs and things. Anyways, um, so what I'm trying to say is, I feel like I'm getting the same thoughts and impressions that international people do when they come here because it's been so long, and I'm so used to being you know in my places. Over there in Asia. Anyways, guys, I should wrap this up. I don't want it to run on forever. But anyways, I'm just, you know, been here in the US. I don't know how long I will be here because uh, that would depend on when the virus subsides and things get better. And can anyone answer that question? I don't think so, unfortunately. Even if you had a crystal ball, I don't think it would be too accurate with this one. So I will have to wait here. It's unexpected. A little bit strange, a little bit fun being back here in the U.S. Totally, you know, a big surprise, unexpected. But I'll just enjoy it for uh, the few weeks or the few months that I'm here. Basically, the key thing I'm waiting for until I leave is uh, for either. Basically, I just want Thailand. I'm just waiting for Thailand to reopen the border, or for a way for me to get back in. Uh, Taiwan is another good option, however. Uh, I don't have many good visa options and my connections aren't too strong to keep me there more than, you know, three months or so. I don't and I don't want to just go somewhere for 90 days. Plus with the quarantine and stuff. Forget it. So Thailand, if you're out there, please uh, let me back in. I, if it's just me, that's OK. You know, whatever you got to do. Um, but that that would be nice. So, guys, it's been nice catching up. Um, I don't know where you are, what you're doing, but hopefully you're staying safe as well. You know, I got your, your mask. I don't know why the mask thing is such a big deal. US is crazy. I don't know why the mask thing is such a big deal here. Um, but yeah, I hope you're wearing a mask. Uh, I'm not trying to force you. You can do whatever you want, but it's a good idea. Anyways, you, you guys know the deal. You don't need me on here talking about the, the five, you know, key steps, hand sanitizer and whatnot. But let's leave it there. And uh, I hope to hear from you guys soon. I have definitely been a little more on social media recently just because, uh, yeah, there's there's not a lot of work going on, obviously. Yeah, we're, we're one of the, the industries, one of the businesses hit pretty hard. But don't worry, we'll survive. I will be OK. I'll be back to normal sometime soon. But hey, guys, let's leave it there. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.